From day one of Pokemon Sword and Shield, VGC players have had their eyes on Grimmsnarl. Its unique typing and access to the ability Prankster make it this year's premier support Pokemon. But what makes it so powerful? That's what I'll be discussing in today's video. Hey guys, how's quarantine treating you? It's not, it's not treating me too well to be honest. So. You might be wondering, Marcus, what kind of video is this? Well, like I said, quarantine hasn't been treating me amazingly. Uh, I'm kind of bored. I don't have any razors. I don't want to go uh, buy razors because someone stole my identity and are now uh, spending money in my bank account. Uh, so none of, everything's just been going uh, down the down the old poop hole. I have to say that so I don't get demonetized. Basically, uh, this has all culminated in me wanting to sort of reinvent content on the channel and work on longer form projects like what you're watching now. And uh, if you guys don't like it, then I guess you can leave. Uh, and if, you, you know, actually, no, no, don't leave. Especially these guys. If you guys leave, I actually starve to death, so don't leave. But yeah, I'm going to be analyzing Grimmsnarl on today's video in sort of a different format. I'm trying to do something different from most VGC players. But if you guys enjoyed this at any point in time, make sure leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content. And you guys voted for Grimmsnarl, so go ahead and vote for the next Pokemon in the community tab after the video ends. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. There's a light right behind the camera, and it's making it weird because I, I'm looking at this LED panel, and it's really bright. The LEDs are burned into my eyes by the time I look down at the script. So forgive me if uh, you see me just kind of squint once in a while it's, it's actually awful i need to learn how to set my lighting better all right so let's start off with an overview of grimmsnarl design wise grimmsnarl is a big hairy imp not unlike most vgc players and forgive me for this part because i have to read from the script directly i can't memorize all these numbers it's a dark and fairy type with some pretty decent stats with 95 hp 120 attack 65 defense 95 special attack 75 special defense and 60 speed You'd expect to see this thing be a trick room attacker, if anything. Do I write like that? Do I I don't want to write like that anymore. Anyways, its ability Prankster actually points most people in the opposite direction of being a trick room offensive Pokemon. Uh, it's very deep support move pool mixed with the ability Prankster makes it an amazing support Pokemon. If you don't know, Prankster actually gives any non-damaging moves plus one priority, uh, but that doesn't affect things like Trick Room. Uh, that doesn't make Trick Room go first. Stop trying it. But yeah, that deep move pool actually does help it quite a bit in justifying it being a support Pokemon. Uh, in fact, even though it has an amazing attack stat and you want to go support, it actually never goes to waste because it has an exclusive move in Spirit Break, which is a 75 base power physical fairy type move which always lowers their opponent's special attack he's basically breaking their spirits if you get it this move kind of allows grimmsnarl to function uh kind of offensively still have an offensive presence while still supporting the team by effectively increasing its longevity on the special defensive side and you definitely want it to be support i mean prankster is an amazing ability and its other abilities are really hard to use uh considering that the other abilities are pickpocket and frisk frisk letting you see the opponent's item which is honestly pretty usable but pickpocket uh being like the worst ability ever i mean you have the god of all support pokemon on your team and you want its job to be stealing a focus sash from a whimsicott like what are you even trying to accomplish there just give it just, just give it the moves it wants to use let it be support guys stop trying to make offensive grimmsnarl work on top of that grimmsnarl's typing even kind of lends it to being a great support pokemon being a dark and fairy type uh, the dark typing helps it out much more than the fairy type much much more uh, dark types are immune to prankster moves and considering some of the most common taunt users in this format are prankster pokemon like grimmsnarl like sableye like whimsicott being immune to taunt means you can always throw out your support moves and being dark type means that you get stab on foul play which means you don't even have to invest into attack if you want this thing to be an offensive threat threat it's literally just going to use your opponent's attack stats so don't even bother the fairy typing is pretty good too i mean being able to hit most things in the metagame for neutral damage is pretty amazing and yeah i mean it has a gmax form we'll get into that mess if i remember it's it's very unremarkable i'll try to cover it in like two seconds <laughs> First off, let's talk about movesets for Grimmsnarl. Now, this Pokemon has an amazing, an amazing support move pool. I want to make that clear if I haven't already. I feel like I've said it 10 times in this video. It has access to staples of support Pokemon moves like Fake Out, Taunt, 
light screen, reflect, fake tears, all these amazing moves. But this thing throws out thunder waves like my roommate throws out the crust on the sandwiches. You're 21, eat the crust. Luckily though, thunder wave is only as accurate as VGC players are in the bathroom urinals, which is to say 90%, with the other 10% of thunder waves ending up all over your shoes when you use it after them. And thunder wave is such a powerful move to have on Grimmsnarl, so no wonder it's reached 62% usage among all Grimmsnarl users on the ladder. And that's, that's literally the most popular move on Grimmsnarl, not fake out, not any of its stab moves, Thunder Wave. And the reason that is, is because speed tiers change dynamically in this game. Uh, in previous games, your speed tier wouldn't change until after the turn had ended in the new turn I began, which means that if you paralyze something with a plus one priority Thunder Wave, that means that in the middle of the turn, they will no longer be fast. They will not have their speed cut in half, which is insane. It's insane. That tailwind you set up, gone, never happened. That max airstream you went for? Congratulations, you're not as slow as you would have been. Did you go for trick room? Oh man, that's great. You really took advantage of that prediction. Now you just have to hope that you actually don't get fully paralyzed. But yeah, I wanted to put that out there because you could pretty much drop any move that isn't Thunder Wave for Thunder Wave on just about every Grim Snarl set. Dual screens Grim Snarl. This is generally what most people run, and it's pretty much the only set I'm gonna cover. Uh, basically, this Grim Snarl runs 252 HP, 188 defense with a bold nature, and 68 special defense. Its moveset is going to be Light Clay with the ability Prankster, of course, and it's going to have Light Screen Reflect so it can take advantage of those 8 turns of extra bulk for the rest of the team. If you don't know, Light Screen cuts the damage from all special moves, and Reflect cuts the damage from all physical moves the remainder of the 5 turns that they're up. But with the Light Clay, it's going to be 8 turns, and getting those screens up is so easy with this set. This set's able to take Adamant Max Attack Excadrill's Iron Head and live it with a decent amount of health left. It's able to take Modest Max Special Attack Toekiss's Dazzling Gleam with a ton of health left, and it's even able to take Modest Max Special Attack Duraludon's Flash Cannon. Wow. And that's even without the screens up. Like, you're able to set up the screen that you need, take the damage that you're gonna take, and then set up the next screen. The fact that you can live even one turn is enough for Grimstar to make a huge impact on the game. Now, the next two move slots are pretty preferential. Uh, it depends on what you need on your team. The first move slot is going to go to one of two moves, and it's either going to be Thunder Wave if you're smart, or Fake Out if you're not so smart like yours truly. The only thing about running Fake Out is uh, that Tony the Tiger over here actually has the same speed tier as Grimmsnarl and generally runs more speed investment. So if you guys go for Fake Out on the same turn, there's a good chance your Grimmsnarl is going to go second and not do anything, just a turn wasted. Uh, so watch out for furries or just run a little bit more speed. It's, it's your choice. The final move slot can go to one of three moves in my opinion. Uh, it's either going to be a dark move or a fairy move either one of its stabs uh, the first option and honestly the best option for most teams is going to be spirit break like i said spirit break will increase your team's longevity uh, by breaking their spirits it it's a lot of things for at least neutral or super effective damage your other options would be the dark moves which would be foul play a uh, move that takes your opponent's attack stat and turns it against them or sucker punch because sucker punch i mean it's just it's just cool However, Grimmsnarl is an extremely customizable Pokemon. You can run a lot of different sets on him. He has a lot of really cool support moves, uh, like Fake Tears. Let's say you're running an extremely powerful special attacker. Well, you can actually use Prankster Fake Tears to catch your opponent off guard, cut their special defense in half, uh, cry, and hit them with a special attack that would knock them out, which it otherwise wouldn't. An alternative to Thunder Wave if you want speed control is running something like Scary Face, with the upsides being you can hit electric types and it can't miss, uh, but the downsides being that you're running Scary Face and people are gonna laugh at you. Just kidding, by the way, I like Scary Face. It's a fun option. But honestly, you can mitigate this whole Thunder Wave missing thing uh, by running Wide Lens. If you just increase that thing by the 1.1 times multiplier that Wide Lens will grant you, it's a now 99% accurate move. But if you're paranoid like me, go ahead and run scary face i don't care uh or you could try the third and honestly the funniest option of running trick with an iron ball or a lagging tail on your grim snarl to slow your opponent down for the rest of the game or you could just you know trick them a hamburger flex on them don't expect me to like not use the item hamburger when you put it in the game pokemon if you're adding a hamburger someone's going to use it finally you could try something along the lines of self swagger now swagger is a move that most people hate because it not only confuses your pokemon but it also doubles their attack making that 
making the chance to hit yourself even more threatening since it's based off of your attack stat. However, you could self-swagger your own Mudsdale with the ability on tempo, doubling its attack, not even taking the secondary effect of confusion, and just being a very threatening Pokemon for the rest of the game. This combo is extremely well with Dynamax Mudsdale, uh, and I actually have faced someone using it with other own tempo Pokemon, as rare as they are in this game. If I had a nickel for every time I faced someone using self-swagger own tempo physical Ludicolo, I'd have 10 cents. Now that isn't much, but the fact that it happened twice is really weird. But yeah, Grimstar is a very deep support move pool. Go ahead and dig deep into it. Uh, that's actually one of the funnest parts about team building is finding hidden tech that other people didn't know existed and just releasing it on the world. That's how I found out Howl is the most broken move in the game. Look it up. Now let's get into what Grimmsnarl counters, uh, but before we actually do that, before we get into the thing that I promised, I lied, uh, we're going to go ahead and cut to a word from our sponsors, which is me, or you, or us. Why don't you ever call me? This is the part of the video where I annoyingly plug everything you could do to support the channel. Uh, the most obvious one would be leaving a like and subscribing. I'm working hard in this video. The script took me forever to write. Uh, if you guys appreciate that at all, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications so the subscription actually matters. I also have a Patreon if you want to support the channel in that way. Uh, these people already have supported me through Patreon. You guys are amazing. You help me put out content. You help me feel motivated. But yeah, by supporting me on Patreon for as little as $1 a month, you get access to exclusive Patreon perks such as a monthly team that I release just for you guys and a weekly exclusive Patreon team building live stream. Consider following or even subscribing to my Twitch channel to support me in my live streams. And you can also check out my merch store where I actually sell stickers. And I, in fact, I actually want to sell a new sticker for every analysis video I make just to mark the occasion. So if you guys want to pick up your slow down sticker, you can go ahead and check that link out in the description. Uh, they're $4.99 each. We also have Boosted Dolmen. It's, it's French for Stone Jenner. It's just a joke in the channel. I don't know why I'm selling it. Follow me and he don't miss. Uh, or you could just pick up a shirt. I sell those too, if you guys want to pick up gamer merch. Uh, besides that, I don't have many other ways to monetize myself. Uh, check out my Discord, check out my Twitter, back to the video. Okay, while this entire video could be considered usage tips, uh, I couldn't find a more eloquent way to word Pokemon that Grimmsnarl counters and or beats. Uh, I felt like this is just the greatest way to describe it. Thank you, Smogon.com. I'm stealing all of your headers from this point on. Now, a lot of these Pokemon won't be Pokemon that Grimmsnarl outright KOs with its stab moves or even its coverage moves, uh, but they're rather Pokemon that Grimmsnarl definitely throws a wrench in their game plan, Pokemon that don't want to be messed up by a Grimmsnarl support move. Uh, so I guess we'll just start off with all the Pokemon that don't want to get Thunder Waved. Okay, I'm just kidding, but I'm not. No Pokemon wants to get Thunder Wave. It's not a fun experience, but I will actually list out some specific Pokemon that Grimmsnarl can mess up with a Thunder Wave or any other form of speed control. These would be something along the lines of fast offensive sweeping Pokemon like Galarian Darmanitan, Charizard, Gyarados, Dragapult, anything along the lines of that do not want to get Thunder Waved. They definitely can't take being a slow Pokemon. They're very frail. Other sweepers that Grimmsnarl stops uh, are slower sweepers or even just generally offensive bulky Pokemon. However, he stops them in a different way. Those light screens and reflects are great against Pokemon like Rhyperior, uh, Gyarados, Dracovish, Torkoal. Uh, and because they're priority, that means that even under Trick Room, you can get a quick light screen up to stop a sweeping Torkoal in the sun. So that's really nice. Finally, I want to list a couple of Pokemon that actually do get straight up countered by Grimmsnarl's offensive moves. And really, it's just like Dragapult's in... And generally speaking, you're only really going to see Dragapult. He doesn't like facing down Grimmsnarl. And the main reason is because a single foul play can knock it out. A Sucker Punch is extremely threatening. And any fairy move coming out from Grimmsnarl, whether it be Spirit Break or Play Rough, is not something that Dragapult wants to take. It's not that bulky. However, when you're facing Dragapult as a Grimmsnarl player, you need to keep in mind one basic rule of thumb. And that is never to underestimate a Dragapult player's ability to justify running Steel Wing to themselves. Uh oh, here come the no fun police, I'm running Steel Wing, uh, aka the I don't have protect on my Dragapult police. Other dark types like Hydreigon or Scrafty are also Pokemon that definitely don't want to face down Grimmsnarl. Uh, Hydreigon especially, uh, because it's it's, it's more common. <laughs> However, neither of those Pokemon are all that common. Uh, Grimmsnarl is not an offensive Pokemon, guys, just I, I feel like I can't say that enough. <laughs> Now for the Pokemon that beat Grimmsnarl. Now earlier I did say that Grimmsnarl can take fairy moves, it can take steel moves, but I should add a little caveat, it can take a fairy or steel move once. Yeah, that's the thing, it's, it's really only EV to take the move once, and that's so it can get both of its screens up. 
an Excadrill can two-shot a Grimmsnarl pretty easily with Iron Head. A Wimscott can easily two-shot Excadrill with Moonblast. Even if the screen is up, you might be able to squeeze that KO in. Uh, and Venusaur, Poison type. Uh, there are like no Poison types in this format. I just realized that it's really only Venusaur and Toxtricity, but Toxtricity isn't really all that great. They all can beat Grimmsnarl. It's not that hard to take Grimmsnarl off the field, but the effect of it even after it's gone off the field uh, is what matters. But yeah, with the screens up, it will make it slightly bulkier. However, uh, why even deal with the screens when you could just run Crit Whimsicott? It doesn't even have to care about screens. It completely ignores those. Did you know that? Did you know crits ignore screens? That's infuriating, isn't it? Wimscott doesn't even have to try to knock out the Grimmsnarl. It could be going for a Dazzling Gleam on the Conkeldur next to the Grimmsnarl, focusing on knocking that out, and the Grimmsnarl is just collateral damage, and everything you did with Grimmsnarl is just kind of for nothing. But yeah, anything with a type advantage, which is pretty intuitive, I feel like I didn't even have to tell you that. Whimsicott, Togekiss, Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl is a Grimmsnarl counter. Yeah, go figure. The list goes on, though. Now, just about every Pokemon enjoys having screens up, enjoys having a speed control partner next to it. However, there are Pokemon that enjoy it much more than others. I'm gonna be listing those in this section, uh, but just know Grimmsnarl is great. It works with every Pokemon. It works on just about every team. Granted, you have a nice diversity of typings. Now, Tyranitar is already stupidly bulky with the sand up, and when it's Dynamax, double HP, slightly increased special defense, it's not really taking much. That's why it's such a common weakness policy user. But if you have screens up, uh, you can't even call that a weakness policy at that point. It's more along the lines of an inconvenience policy, because uh, Dazzling Gleam isn't doing that much. Moonblast isn't doing that much. Uh, not even like close combat will be able to knock it out behind screen once it's Dynamaxed. It's, it's a disgusting thing. So go ahead and run your Grimstone next to Tyranitar. It's an amazing partner for it. The speed control is incredible. You get so much more out of it with Tyranitar because Tyranitar isn't the fastest Pokemon in the format. Being able to cut everything else's speed in half actually goes a long way. Duraldon is another kind of mid speed tier Pokemon uh, that has very low special defense that gets so much out of light screen. You can set up a light screen priority to allow it to live things like Draco Meteor from opposing Duraldon or just powerful fairy type moves from Togekiss or Whimsicott. It it loves it so much. Like Duraldon and screens just go together so well. And finally, I want to list Mudsdale. Mudsdale not only enjoys having screens up, it not only enjoys having you paralyze Pokemon because they might not move, not so much the speed control portion of it, but more just making sure they don't move. Uh, but being able to self-swagger, like I mentioned earlier, with own tempo means that Dynamaxing that Mudsdale, which, you know, it, own tempo means it can't be intimidated either. Uh, that's actually really, really scary. You can't intimidate it. It's a plus two attacker. You have to burn it or it's going to sweep through the rest of your team. It's a powerful Pokemon. It's a great partner for Grimmsnarl. Uh, it's no wonder people were using it ever since the beginning of the format. And people still continue to use it. It's not as common anymore, but you still see it once in a while. But yeah, that's just about everything I have to say about Grimmsnarl. Uh, oh, I didn't cover the Gigantamax form. Okay, so um, imagine a very tall Aku from Samurai Jack. Uh, and imagine it going for a dark type move that doesn't have a chance to put you to sleep, but rather has a chance to put you to sleep the next turn. So even if you do at some point get that chance to put something to sleep, um, it's it's probably not even going to do much because they still get two turns to attack if you include that turn. Uh, it, it's not good. It's not a good Pokemon. But if I were to recommend anything for it, um, nasty plot it's not good so i'm actually going to issue a couple of challenges to my viewers today uh i want you to prove to me that gmax grimmsnarl is a usable pokemon go ahead and submit some rental teams for me to use in my live streams this week uh, i want to see gmax grimmsnarl teams in particular and i also want to do a little weekly art competition if you guys can do me a favor send me some grimmsnarl art you can drop it in my discord which is linked in the description or you can send it to me over twitter i'll feature it in the next analysis video or whatever video comes out uh probably something like this it's going to be this kind of video but also let me know what you guys think about this format of video i worked really hard on this uh, i'm very happy with how the script turned out it's a fun time to make these videos and i feel much more fulfilled uh, i would appreciate if you guys would support me by leaving a like and maybe even possibly sharing it on twitter sharing it with a discord sharing it with a friend any one of those things goes a long way for helping me grow the channel and it just makes me feel more fulfilled go ahead and comment what you think about grimstar or even what you just think about this analysis let me know in the comment section down below positive and negative comments are welcome uh, just don't be mean to each other and like i said these are the type of videos i really like making so go ahead and comment what pokemon you want to see in a future video because i plan on doing these weekly however you can vote for next week's video in particular in the community tab uh it's it's on my channel somewhere just go to the community tab and vote there but thank you so much for everyone for watching the video thank you so much to my patreons especially for supporting me through this time 
You guys are the real MVPs. But thank you everyone for watching. I appreciate all of you. Have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Design-wise, Grimstar is essentially a big, hairy imp. And, oh, God, he's pointing a bow at me. Dear God. No. Oh, God. No. Oh, God. Ah. Oh, that wasn't scripted. No, you don't get it back. No. I have five more. No. Oh, God. Franklin, go away. Okay, I blocked that one.